When someone has a passion for what they do, it comes through in the product they provide their customers. Just ask LaRocco's Pizza's new owner, Jason Johnson, about their crust. They make it every day and let it rise for a minimum of 24 hours before they use it for their pizza. And his staff doesn't want to do anything they won't be the best at. And you can taste it in their pizza. LaRocco's Pizza, just a half block north of the I-470 in Gage Boulevard exit. Come taste the difference. It's time for Real Estate 101 with the Carrie Brown team from Preferred Advisors. Good Saturday morning to you. This is Carrie Brown, associate broker with EXP Realty and the Preferred Advisors team, and you're listening to Real Estate 101. I am here with Chuck and Natalie Hogan with CWC Electric. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Good morning. We are going to be talking electricity and cool electrical stuff that is out. So um, let's start by first off telling them about you guys. How long have you been in business? All the good stuff that uh, you've been doing over the years. Well, we uh, we started CWC Electric uh, 12 years ago and uh, have been sole owners of it for the last seven years. Uh, we've grown uh, exponentially during that time. We have a team of great guys. Uh, and girls uh, working with us and uh, so we are mainly a uh, service company so you have something go wrong in your home or business we go figure it out and fix it for you Uh, we also do some uh, custom remodeling with some of the uh, remodeling contractors in town and just as a little background chuck is um, a retired topeka firefighter and i worked for the state of kansas for many years so this was sort of a second career for both of us and you were doing very well at it. No, well, thank you. Uh, we we enjoy it. I've uh, been doing electrical work actually since my teenage years, and in different capacities. Even while on the fire department, I worked part time for uh, one of the companies in town, and uh, I enjoy it. I love, love figuring things out, fixing th- fixing things, and and uh, the guys that uh, work for us are very similar in personality. Uh, all you know, they're. Being a service company, we have to – they have to not only have great uh, electrical skills because of the diverse type of work we do, but they've really got to be people, uh, people persons. They've got to be able to communicate effectively, uh, be friendly, and uh, make people feel comfortable, you know, that they're in their home or in their office uh, fixing things. Absolutely. You guys are doing something exciting right now, um, doing the designer show house, correct? Yeah, so we're, for now the last two years, been the sole electrician at the Designer Show House. Uh, this year, it's over. Uh, it's a newer home over uh, near Tenth uh, and Indian Hills Road, and it actually uh, starts tomorrow. Uh, it, well, actually, opens to the public on Saturday, and uh, so it's a a large home, beautiful home. The designers have worked really hard, have really changed what was a. It, it was a nice home, but it was dated, and so they've done a great deal of work. Took out some walls really made it more open and it's uh, really beautiful we're very proud to be a a part of that and to be able to help the designers make their vision uh, come to life and since we're talking about that natalie let's talk about some of the cool stuff before we get into why you shouldn't play with electricity um, that's out on the market well we're seeing a lot of products that um, people are are loving a couple of those things are lighted closet rods um People are putting, people really like um, these to make their closets special. And so we're seeing a lot of that. We see a lot of um, pop up outlets um, above and under cabinet lighting, accent lighting of all kinds. With the advent of LED technology, there's a lot you can do now that wasn't possible just a few years ago. I just came from a project that we've been working on where they did a lot of toe kick lighting underneath their bathroom vanities and kitchen uh, counters, uh, cabinets, and it just looks gorgeous. I think light brings a a house to life. And so people use this accent lighting um, even in unconventional ways, and it's just beautiful. I imagine. And that would be really handy, you know, if you've got a day sleeper and a night sleeper to have, like, lighted closet rods that way they're not flipping on the light trying to get ready and you know waking the other person up another thing that we see is a lot of lighted mirrors mirrors with the lights built in and it has a um the light is true to life so when you're applying your makeup when you go outside it's the same um what do i want to say chuck color it's uh, kelvin is the 
Kelvin is the rating that's used, and so they have, and it, many of the uh, mirrors are available with adjustable lighting. I'm not talking about dimmable, but you can adjust the color of the light. To matter. I understand that's very important when putting on makeup. And so you can have a, a daylight look, a warm, a warmer light, and adjust it so you can uh, makeup can be applied according to the circumstances you're going to be in. And it also makes it easier for guys to get a really close shave, and it just looks sleek and modern. So a lot of people are gravitating towards that. Um, we've also sold, sold quite a few speaker lights. They're they look just like a regular recessed can light, but they have a speaker built into them with a remote control. It, it uses uh, Bluetooth technology to, you know, you can uh, just stream your music to your lights. And so you can add speakers without having to run any wiring uh, in your in your house. Oh, wow. Does it change colors or beats or anything like that? Or I haven't seen those yet. The ones we, that we've installed do not do that. But, yeah, somebody's going to come up with that. Like Natalie said, with LED lighting, there it is, it is so simple and relatively inexpensive that they're coming up with all kinds of stuff. It just changes you know, every week. There's just new products and new ways to use that. Yeah, those particular um, lights that I'm talking about, you don't, you can't even tell that it has a speaker in it, and it has a really nice sound quality. I was surprised. I expected, you know, something below par, but when we installed it, it was like, wow, this this sounds good. So the question is, is whenever you see all these cool things, do you go home and put them into your house, or are you like all the rest of us in the trade that that's like the last thing you do? No, actually, that that's I've always used our house as a test bed. Even when LED lighting, I remember the very first LED lighting job we did, it was about, uh, it's probably been 12, 13 years ago. A, uh, it was a doctor in town, it was a customer of ours, had a very unique home with uh, had 25-foot ceilings with recessed lighting in it. And so we would, every year, go there and change his light bulbs. And so he's paying hundreds of dollars every year to change light bulbs. And he actually brought the product to me. He says, hey, you know, I've been reading about these LED lighting I said, man, they are expensive. And he goes, <laughs> he said, not as expensive as paying you guys to come here every year and change light bulbs. And so I remember at that time we put them in. They the the lights cost almost a hundred dollars a piece, and but we changed them and and but it very quickly after that you started to see them come onto the market, and uh, I I bought some and installed them in my house. You know, I wanted to if wanted to know if they were worth it, and. Uh, and so as I realized, hey, I'm not having to change light bulbs anymore, you know, eventually convert our whole house to LED. We've installed diff- as different Wi-Fi and Bluetooth products have come available. I've always been one to try them out first. That way, when people ask, I can, I can tell them, yeah, I've used it. It's great. And then once it gets out there, then my customers can speak for it. But, yes, I, I love playing with the new stuff that comes out. And, you know, another thing that's really popular is anything, um, smart switches, uh, anything that can be controlled from your phone. So people are controlling their lighting from their telephone. You know, you can be in Europe and turn your lights on and off in your house. And so I've often told Chuck, you know, why don't we try that out? Let's go to Europe and see if we really can control (laughs) the lights from over there. And he hasn't taken me up on that yet but it's it's um ring doorbells ring security cameras all of these products that have come on the market and say just the last five years or so people are um really loving they're they're buying them they're installing them and they're liking them so we've been very busy <laughs> i bet here carrie i'm gonna show you the app on my phone for the, all the smart switches at our office in our home and see so right now i could take the dispatch office and i could start turning the lights off and on and and make uh, our dispatcher go nuts so but (laughs) anyway i would probably have a lot of fun with that actually but it's it's (laughs) not just each one of those is programmed we can have them come on before business hours in the office and shut off at a certain time our exterior lighting it they we can automatically dim it yeah, come on at a preset dim. We can have it stay on all night or shut off at a certain time. It takes the place of where people would have fo- photo cells or multiple photo cells. This takes care of it all. Just another. And it's very simple. This is a very intuitive product that uh, we, we love and actually sell a lot of. Which is really great given the climate in the world today where people are breaking into homes at any given point in time. Now you can see when they come to the door, but 
they would never know whether you were home or not. So that's awesome. Yeah, correct. It's it, we we try to teach people that is don't give away. It's like, oh, I'm not home right now. Okay, that's all we needed to know. We're going to bust in now. Right. So we just you know act like you're home. Just tell people, hey, I'm not a not, not available right now. You know what do you need, or you can leave the package or whatever it might be. But you can leave the impression that you, you are home. So it is very helpful. I had a lot of fun with it. We had a kid come over to see one of our our kids and. Uh, he didn't realize that I could see him through our doorbell. And uh, I said, hey, what are you doing? And he jumped sky high. I had the best time. And he was like, where are you? And he's looking all over the place. And I said, see the doorbell? And he, like, puts his eye up to the doorbell. I'm like, okay, that's creepy. Move back. <laughs> <laughs> so now anytime he comes in, he waves at the doorbell. <laughs> yeah, our, our grandchildren enjoy it. Uh, they like to come and speak to us. <laughs> Whatever. And for I, I had recently, I wasn't home when they stopped by, and so we just have a whole conversation with them to the doorbell. But you know, the security lighting itself is probably your biggest defense. And we we've been busy installing a lot of security lighting, not just at businesses, but at people's personal homes. Um, that's probably the biggest deterrent that i suggest to people if they are concerned is add more lighting absolutely and even uh, landscape lighting it it adds you know as agent you know that as you know, warmth and curb appeal to a home but that low level lighting provides security because it you know the, the you know the thieves are looking for a dark place and so you got to add you're, you're doing two things with one you're adding beauty to the home plus that level of security without making your yard look like a prison yard. Absolutely. I know in our house we have cameras from all over, so if you try to break into ours, you've been recorded for quite some time before you hit the door, so we're going to know who you are. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're the same way. We have a complete surveillance system you know, around the office, shop, and around our home, and it is. It's, and even that's, that's not as expensive as people think. There's very some nice value-priced uh, packages you can buy that uh, really uh, give you a lot. And, and those, too, have an app where you can see it on anywhere. You can look at your property uh, from anywhere because it's all web-based applications. And we've gotten some great raccoon and possum footage. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, even out in the woods, my husband has deer cameras, and we figured out what happens to his salt blocks and all kinds of stuff. We need to send those to, like, the funniest home videos because nobody would believe it. <laughs> so we're going to take a quick break for a word from our sponsors, and we'll be right back to talk some more about why you should not play with electricity. Southwest Topeka has a good neighbor. State Farm agent Jim Garrison, now at 29th and Urish. If your current insurance situation has you going around in circles, get off the roundabout and stop in and meet Jim and his wonderfully efficient staff. Let Jim Garrison give you a quote and make the Garrison comparison. He's confident that with State Farm's competitive rates, the right coverage, and his unmatched service, you'll want to make him your new insurance agent. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there, and Jim Garrison is there for you. Northeast of the roundabout at 29th than Yurish. When someone has a passion for what they do, it comes through in the product they provide their customers. Just ask LaRocca's Pizza's new owner, Jason Johnson, about their crust. They make it every day and let it rise for a minimum of 24 hours before they use it for their pizza. And his staff doesn't want to do anything they won't be the best at. And you can taste it in their pizza. LaRocca's Pizza, just a half block north of the I-470 Engage Boulevard exit. Come taste the difference. Thanks for joining us again. This is Carrie Brown, Associate at Broker at EXP Realty and the Preferred Advisors team, and you're listening to Real Estate 101. I am back with Chuck and Natalie Hogan with CWC Electric, and we are talking electricity. We At the beginning of the show, we were talking about all the cool things, um, but how about you guys tell us how people can get a hold of you? Well, you can call the office. Uh, our phone number is 785-215-8775. Or go online to our website at cwcelectric.com, and there's you can look at projects, uh, look at our Google reviews, and uh, there's a contact us uh, tab there where you can email us directly uh, through the website. Awesome. And if you want to listen to the show after, if you want to share it, 
there's a lot of uh, cool things that Natalie was talking about, new products and things that are out, both Chuck and Natalie. You'll be able to find that on our on our Facebook page and on our website. If you were to Google Preferred Advisors Team or Carrie Brown, you'll find our Facebook page. It's also on the Real Estate 101 Facebook page, and our website is preferredadvisorsteam.com. Um, so let's talk electricity and why you should not play with it. Because, as we say, it can kill you and it will hurt the whole time you're dying. It's, uh, it's really – people are very – uh, they'll take on a project at their home, and I often hear people say, "Well, it's it's only 120 volts because that's the uh, the general uh, voltage that runs through a house." You'll have some 240 volt appliances, but it's only 120 volts. What people don't know is that 120 volt electricity uh, is the cause of more electri- electri- electrocution deaths than all other voltages combined. Because it's just a very simple thing is that current disrupts the flow uh, of your, your heartbeat and puts it into a fibrillation and it stops the flow of blood. And it's a, just a very simple thing. And so you, it, it is very dangerous unless you really know what you're doing. Very confident, not overconfident, confident. Uh, you should contact an electrician to take care of things, at least assess it, tell you whether you've got something serious going on or maybe something very minor. And that's really the case oftentimes. People will start out with what's a minor problem, and and they'll ignore it instead of getting something taken care of right away. And something as simple as a loose connection, which may be just causing a single flickering light, can, if not taken care of, can cause a failure of the circuit. In the worst case, it can cause a fire because that, that, that arcing is a very high temperature when that happens. And so I just did a job the uh, day before yesterday that exact thing that happened now, i got in there all the wiring inside the box was burnt it was in a room that had wood paneling the wood paneling around the box was burnt and the, the sheet rock was all damaged it was an elderly woman that lived there and the, where this outlet was t- tucked behind some furniture and she had just noticed her light had been flickering for a long time but finally it went out and that's why uh, she called and so she had a real dangerous situation and there were no smoke detectors in the house so we got that fixed. Make sure she had smoke detectors, and uh, but it is these these what are oftentimes just a very simple thing to find and fix can turn into uh, either costly, very costly, or even uh, uh, deadly uh, circumstances not addressed properly. Wow, I know we just recently went, and um, I'm really passionate about the people that work for me to understand what happens in like home inspections not that we can diagnose or even pretend to be inspectors or anything like that but just so they know enough to say hey this really needs to be looked at and not every home inspector catches everything so maybe to be able to have be on alert to say hey this needs to be looked at um so we had a class with um with charlie at uh, topeka wind supply and he was telling a story about you guys actually helping him uh, where metal siding had actually pushed electricity through and caused rivets into um, through where the water hose attached to the house. Right. That particular house wasn't grounded properly. So what, there was no path for the uh, current to return to ground where it wants to go. And so the siding and the, the water line were all energized. So someone coming into contact with that if we're just fortunate that nothing the proper circumstances never happened where somebody touched that and got electrocuted but became the homeowner became aware of a problem and then you know when we found found the issue and then started digging into it and find out what caused it but yeah it was a screw through a wire that happened that's uh, something the root cause of that was the house was recited and a lot of times in older houses they'll have run wires on the outside and a siding company will come and lay right over that and will they have to screw that siding to the house and uh, though i mean most companies they try to be very careful and to avoid that or call an electrician to move the wires but we see a lot of times that metal siding it gets screwed right through a wire and or and if it doesn't cause a dangerous situation it it, it will kill the electricity to a circuit in an impossible place to find and that can become very costly uh, to repair 
That is, it's crazy how that chain of events could even happen. Yeah. But it happens. I mean. Oh, yeah. It happens all the time. I know in home inspections, there's almost always something electrical flagged on a home inspection. Well, I I think one thing also that people forget is everything has a lifespan. You know, your electrical panel, your wiring, everything has a a lifespan. And um, one thing we really try to educate people about is Federal Pacific stab lock panels. And Chuck can probably tell you a little bit more about that. Yeah, those are often flagged on inspections, and they are a danger. Uh, They, just real briefly, they do not, they are not listed by Underwriters Laboratory. They basically, back in the 80s, they lost that listing because they simply fail to trip when they should. They have a, if they've been activated one time, especially the two-pole, like for your air conditioner, your dryer, uh, if they've been activated, whether electrically or mechanically, then they have a 63% failure rate. In other words, they will lock internally and will not turn off. Your circuit breakers are your they're your safety valve for the electricity. So something, so just them failing will not cause a problem. It's if something goes wrong in the house, your safety valve no longer works. And so then it overheats to the point that uh, you could have a fire. Absolutely. And we actually see those, I would say probably four times a year where they're still in a house yeah there's still a lot of them out there and so we have a, a company policy if somebody's uh, adding circuits you know we need and we go and find that's the type of panel we will not add circuits to one we will not work on one we will give them we have a letter we give them and uh and recommend it being changed and we will always tell them to get other bids have get other opinions but this is just a policy and the stance that we've taken right and i know we've even seen um leopard duct tape used in the back end of a panel and for uh, homeowners just to understand whenever they're doing an inspection they pull that panel off of the electrical box and they look at all those breakers behind that you should never have duct tape no back there duct duct tape and and electricity don't go well together No, and so no it should you know i've seen them use it to cover up the holes Mm -hmm. you know you people knock out holes and if they've removed an item well they'll just they'll use duct tape to to close it up they'll use duct tape to wire to join wires together yeah there's many many creative uses uh uh, improper uses people uh try to use duct tape with with electricity but should never you know it's got to be junctions have to be enclosed in boxes within a box and have a cover on it but as as you know you see open splices all the time in attic and uh basements where wires are just you know strung together twisted together sometimes with duct tape sometimes with wire nut and none of that's allowed and it's uh, so that's why the inspections are a good thing. As you'd said earlier, it's uh, the inspectors give a good, broad overview, and, and most of the ones in town are, are good, and they'll say, hey, this is something you need to have a licensed electrician look at. You know, I don't like what I'm seeing, uh, or a, a plumber, whatever the case may be, but they give a, a, a buyer you know, a good idea of what they're getting into, and then they can explore it further, and, and we do that all the time. If we'll... We'll take, we'll have agents call us and they'll send us the inspection report and uh, you know, we can run by there and look at it real quickly, give them an estimate of what it's going to take and that, you know, goes into uh, their decision making and also, you know, making the home safe before they move into it if they decide to buy. Absolutely. And, you know, everybody at some point will miss something and there have been cases where that has happened and that's why I thought it would be good for for the people that work with me to to go through Charlie's class because he's super knowledgeable and just to kind of give you an awareness of what's going on around you to say okay well that doesn't look right or I remember Charlie saying or you know the last time Chuck and Natalie were here or Chuck saw this or you know the more you see the more aware you become and that helps you to to help a buyer have a clear set of eyes because you're excited whenever you see the house that you want. Oftentimes, you're looking at how it's decorated. You're not really looking at that structure, and that's what we're there for. We're there to see, okay, hey, this has got some significant cracks, or, you know, we can't turn this light on, or they've used duct tape in places there shouldn't be duct tape, and or, you know, something's not piped the right way, and, you know, we're saying, listen, you need an inspector. You need to have this looked at. Um, 
the excitement, it's kind of hard to get past that because they just want everything to be perfect because they love the house and they want everything to go smoothly. And sometimes it's just not the house for them because of the budget and what needs to be done. Right. Yeah, sometimes. I mean, uh, the most part of the time, the... The, the repairs needed are you know well within budget but th- there are some things you know you, as you know you'll run into and it can be a game changer as far as what it will take to make it safe make it right and you know that's where that house they're so excited about becomes nothing but a burden and a heartache to them mm-hmm. once they get into it and then there's nothing they can do about it so taking that step beforehand is so important and making sure you get a professional viewpoint on the mechanics of the house an impartial view because you know I'm, I'm happy for people but i don't get excited about their home like they do right and so we can impartially tell them uh what they need you know what they have to look forward to on the electrical side and fortunately it hasn't happened too often but there have been instances to where it really wasn't even safe for the homeowner that was selling it to be there yeah absolutely. and and they've lived there for years and didn't know it absolutely yeah we've seen that and it's it's it, it's kind of disturbing to see people come to that understanding that they've been living in a dangerous house uh, but yeah we're glad you know this it's what we specialize in is that troubleshooting finding these difficult things and and then finding solutions and you know we'll oftentimes have a well here's a b and c you know this is if budget's not an issue this is the best way to do it and you know b maybe well if, you know if you were my little sister this is how i'd tell you to do it and c is like okay this is the bare minimum you'll make it safe but you know down the road you're gonna have to spend some more money to complete this to help people again you know get what they want but you know one thing is if you think of any house built before 1970 what did you have maybe a refrigerator and a washer and dryer and a tv but now we have all of these computers and gaming systems and just an explosion of technology. And a lot of these houses weren't built to handle uh, those kinds of electrical loads. And so they need upgrades and um, you know, other things may need to be done. And that's speaking of uh, houses, once you get, I think it was 1969, is when the National Electrical Code started requiring grounding of circuits and houses. So you, I know you see all the time that we have a lot of older houses here in the Topeka area, and so people will have stuck in you know three prong outlets and ungrounded, and it won't pass that inspection. Well, there are there we get the ABC. There are th- basically three different ways we can fix that uh, from installing a GFC outlet in that place, and that meets code for that circumstance to rewiring that area or the house which of course is the that's the most expensive option but we can let them know and make the corrections necessary and give them those options absolutely so real quick the designer show house uh, started on april 27th it ends may 19th uh, monday and tuesday it is closed for private events open on wednesday and thursday from 10 to 3 Thursday, it's also opened again from 5 to 7, Friday from 10 to 3, and Saturday and Sunday from 10 to 5. And you guys are the... We are, we're the soul. We provided all the uh, electrical labor uh, for them, helped the, you met with the designers and got the lighting installed that they wanted. And as we, they uh, did make some uh, structural changes to the house and so we re- rewired those areas another part and uh, something different in addition to all the designers that do such a great job we uh, we're also the uh, i'm on the board of the topeka area area building association and the topeka professional remodelers council which is a, a subset of the building association and the remodeling association we took the basement. The whole basement was unfinished. We took half the basement, and uh, uh, we had all the different contractors uh, volunteered. We finished it, made it into a beautiful family room, TV room, and so real proud to be a part of that as well. Awesome. Be sure and check it out. Real quick, how do they get a hold of you again? Our uh, office number is 215-8775. Our website, cwcelectric.com, and there's a contact us uh, icon on there to email us. And if you're looking to buy or sell, be sure and give us a call at 785-213-5188. And thanks for listening to Real Estate 101. Thank you for listening to Real Estate 101 with the Carrie Brown team from Preferred Advisors. 